Greetings in Christ and welcome to the series on Luke and these two books, the Gospel of Luke and the Book of Acts. During a children's service, the preacher asked the kids, um, what is small and furry and gathers nuts? A little boy stuck up his hand and answered, Sounds like a squirrel to me, but the, I know the answer must be Jesus. If I have to ask you who the most imposing personality in the New Testament is for you, besides Jesus, of course, you may have different answers. It, may, it might be Paul, it might be the Apostle John, or several others. Knowing the title of the series, you will say, but I know it must be Luke. And yes, in my opinion, it should be. Now, in this background to the series, I'm not going to try to be very academic and complete. The reason being that if I were to do that, this series could probably run into several years of weekly messages. On top of that, not all of you would be interested in all of the background and the apologetic material, like the way Luke deals with history, the way Luke approaches theology, eschatology, and a whole lot of other aspects. So I have decided to pitch the series at the level of the average Christian, if there can be something such as an average Christian. So we'll have one or two messages of introduction, but it will not go into the detail in a complete manner, in an academic way. I'm not going to do that. So just be aware, there is a lot more information and knowledge. And with the series, we are not trying to attempt to be complete. We are not trying to be comprehensive or as complete as we could be in our study. That will also be true of the exposition or Bible study sections later on, verse by verse. I'm also not there going to try and be as comprehensive as possible. Um, I'm going to try to highlight certain aspects of the Gospel of Luke and the Book of Acts, and specifically and especially from a perspective of missions and evangelism. Books have been written and commentaries running into hundreds of pages on the book of Luke and the book of Acts and books of hundreds of pages just on aspects like the historical accuracy of Luke. So we are not going to be that comprehensive and that complete in our study. If the subjects that will be raised, individual aspects, interest you, you are welcome to make further studies and you're welcome to contact me for books and commentaries that are very detailed and comprehensive. Many of these resources are free and available and you may contact me to download them or for me to email some of them to you. So let us get down then to understanding this man called Luke. First of all, I must say that there is no external evidence for the existence of Luke or any other information about him. What do I mean by external evidence? External evidence outside the Bible. But even in the Bible, we find no direct biographical information. Nobody speaks of Luke or writes about Luke, and he doesn't even name himself in the two books that he has written and left for us. He is mentioned only three times in the New Testament by Paul, and let us look at those three verses. As the slides show, I am using the English Standard Version Bible, 2011 version, for these three verses. The first mention is in Colossians 4, Verse 14, and Paul writes, Luke, the beloved physician, greets you as does Demas. Now, we can see here that Paul does tell us something about Luke, and that is that he has a medical background, 
or medical skills and I will explain in greater detail later on. But allow me to say at this point that those that dispute the fact look at the medical background make Paul a liar because Paul uses the correct terminology iatros for physician or a doctor of the day and it is unnecessary to dispute the fact that Luke had a medical background and medical skills. The next verse is actually the last time that Paul mentions Luke and it is found in 2 Timothy 4 verse 11. Luke alone is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you for he is very useful to me for ministry. The only other time that Luke is mentioned in the New Testament is in the letter of Paul to Philemon. Philemon only has one chapter and in verse 24, let's start at verse 23, Paul writes the following, Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, sends greetings to you, and so do Mark, Aristarchus, Demas and Luke, my fellow workers. Now you will agree that we don't learn much from these three times that Luke is mentioned by Paul and that is all we have where Luke is mentioned by name in the New Testament because as I say, he does not name himself in the two books, the Gospel and Acts. Fortunately for us, Luke was such a gifted man, such an exceptional academic, that we learn so much when we study the Gospel of Luke and Acts about the exceptional academic skills of this man. We also learn much about his background and other useful facts about Luke. I often hear even pastors say that Paul wrote most of the New Testament. That is not true. Most of the New Testament was written by Luke. His two books, the Gospel and Acts, make up just over 27% of the New Testament. Now most of you I know did not know that. <clears throat> there we have the first reason why Luke is so important. Another interesting fact is that I often come across a misconception that Paul was the most educated of all the first century believers and that is definitely not true. He was highly educated as a Pharisee but as an academic he does not compare with Luke. Luke is by far the most highly educated first century Christian that we meet inside and outside the Bible. As we work through our series, that will become obvious to you as well. The next interesting fact is that Luke is the only writer of a New Testament document that is not a Jew. We do not know who wrote the book of Hebrews, but from its content we are confident that it was also written by a Jew with a strong educational background, just like Paul had. So Luke was the only Gentile, non-Jewish author that we find in the New Testament. Before we move on, <coughs> allow me to say that there are lots of textual critics of the Bible these days, especially those calling themselves Christians, who go to tremendous lengths to try and prove that the Bible is inaccurate and what they are therefore saying is that the Bible cannot be the Word of God. Now, I don't call these theological or so-called theological experts Christian at all. I will not be entertaining any of their arguments in this series. I want to tell you as a Christian, that no other book from the first century, even when written by a single author, can compare with the accuracy 
the historical evidence, the archaeological evidence, the textual evidence, internal evidence and external evidence, therefore, that the Bible has. You can have complete confidence in your Bible. I say again, no other religious document, and that is from any period and any time, compares with the Bible. As we move along, I'm sure that you will agree and come to the same conclusion. Some of what I'm going to share with you regarding the biography of Luke is certain and definite and can be taken as fact, but there is also a lot that is not guaranteed to be factual. However, I must say that most historical theologians will agree with most of what I'm sharing with you. Also, ultimately, it's not of crucial importance that we compile a perfect set of facts around the person of Luke. What it does help us to do is to get a picture in our mind of this very special Christian of the early church who gave us these excellent books in the New Testament. Luke was more or less the same age as Paul and he did not come to Christ via the teaching of Paul. Paul got to know Luke at Antioch. And Luke was a Greek that we see from his name, which is shortened from the full name Lokanos to Lukos. But it is also certain that he must have been a Roman citizen and he might even have been from Syrian Arab extraction, but that is not certain. So we have here somebody who is about the same age as Paul, who is from the city of Antioch and came to Christ via the group of Christians active in Antioch. He may also have been interested in studying the Jewish literature and religion before becoming a Christian because we know that he knows the Septuagint, which is the... Old Testament translation of the Jewish Old Testament books that was made in 300 BC and was very well known and not only used by Greek-speaking proselytes to the Jewish faith but by Jews themselves who could speak Greek and many could. It is also accepted that Luke was already quite a mature believer before he met with Paul. Despite the fact that Luke was not writing history per se, a history as Josephus wrote, in fact two massive volumes of history, however, it is accepted today even amongst secular historians who are not Christian that Luke was an exceptional writer of history and a student of history. It must be said he must have been academically qualified and we must remember at the time there were no universities like we have today with set prescribed works and set prescribed subjects for any direction of study. Academics from the time of Luke chose their subjects they wanted to study and studied under specific older academics who had achieved renown and often not at the same place either. Uh, many of them moved around and studied one subject under one professor, if we want to call them that, and often traveled to another city to study another subject under a different professor. Luke was obviously grounded in history, well grounded. Another aspect of study in those times was classical literature, and Luke would have studied that in Greek, and that was how languages were studied. Luke is an exceptional linguist and an exceptional writer. He compares very favorably with the best of the Greek writers who were regarded as of a higher standard and quality than those of the Roman Empire or Latin then. It seems that he studied Latin as well, and it may even be that he had an excellent grounding in Aramaic, which was a general language used throughout the Middle East and definitely in Syria. So as far as languages go, he was exceptionally well qualified. Luke also 
had a medical background and that is clear from the several references and studies made and it is also clear from the two books he wrote and as we already saw Paul made reference of his medical qualifications so Luke was a doctor in in the sense of the time but we must also remember that very few medically renowned academics practiced medicine there were many different types of medicine practiced during the time of the first century you had herbalists totally focused on using herbs and plant material and their extractions for their healing properties then there were the charlatans or we could call them magicians today false doctors such as we find amongst many witch doctors or so-called traditional healers then there were those doctors who studied the human body and disease and also remedies for those diseases they may have used their own preparations if they had also studied herbal remedies or they might have used the remedies procured from those who made such preparations then luke was also definitely knowledgeable about maritime affairs his use of maritime language and words is also evident in his writing and especially in the book of acts it is also accepted even among secular non-christian historians that luke had an especially gifted skill at doing research and that we can also see in his writing both in the book of acts and in his gospel we also know that he had a keen interest in geography as his background information in both the gospel and in acts clearly shows us he is extremely precise in his research and his facts and that also clearly points us to a person who was very well educated a quick summary now of what we've learned so far look obviously as a a brilliant academic mind with skills in the fields of medicine history linguistics research and perhaps some other fields that we are not aware of furthermore we learn that luke is a syrian greek or a greek from syria we also learn that he has studied the jewish religion he is very knowledgeable on the greek old testament the septuagint so much so that he uses the greek language peculiar to the septuagint which was translated more than 300 years before luke lived so what more can we say about luke he was a humble man a unpretentious man we know that although his name was locarnos he was only known by the diminutive of that name luke or lucos and that is further underpinned by the fact that he does not identify himself in his two books that he left us luke is concise specific in his facts very confident in his style he writes in a fluent organized manner he is absolutely in control of his subject matter and for these reasons his two books in the new testament are the best examples of christian writing in the first century luke also has complete balance in his writing and in the subjects that he discusses luke more than any other writer has complete balance between the practical aspects of the christian faith without neglecting the spiritual aspects of the faith luke also is the new testament writer who gives us the grand view like nobody else does luke's eschatology for example is not all about the parousia the return of christ not at all for luke the grand view starts from before creation luke has a grand view and discernment and wisdom and a wide vision that we don't find with any other new testament writer he starts from before creation which continues right throughout into eternity and luke is telling us in the gospel and in acts how he sees that plan of god playing itself out both in the life of christ and in the formation of the church and growth of the body of christ that follows 
Luke acknowledges the Jewish roots of the Christian faith, but he does not overemphasize it. He balances it perfectly with the overall overarching view of the new covenant in Jesus Christ. In that way, Luke appeals both to the first Jewish readers of his books, but also equally. His books are attractive to non-Jewish readers and even unbelievers. No other New Testament writer succeeds in presenting a balanced view on so many subjects and, and aspects of the Christian faith than Luke does. I will not bore you with detailed information about these characteristics of Luke and his books, and you are welcome to make further studies if this should be of interest to you. Finally, something we also need to keep in the back of our minds is the fact that Luke is very supportive of his fellow workers. Paul does not call him an assistant, but he calls him his fellow worker. And obviously Luke did a lot to alleviate the physical needs and problems of Paul. But more than that, Paul also calls him a fellow worker and because of that, it is also obvious that Luke was not a background worker, that he was not only supporting other workers, but was an evangelist of note himself. And so we end the general introduction of Luke the man. In the next lecture, we will look at the introduction to the Gospel of Luke.